We now know a lot of things about the pandemic virus and how the second wave could evolve in the months to come. Let me mention some of the things we know. First, the H1N1 pandemic virus has become the dominant influenza strain almost everywhere. Second, there are no signs that this virus has mutated to a more virulent or lethal form. Three, most patients with pandemic influenza suffer a moderate illness, and the number of severe cases and deaths is still very small. For despite the administration of millions of, treatments, of treatment courses of antiviral drugs, oseltamivir remains effective, and very few pandemic viruses resistant to this drug have been detected. Five, while there are reasons to be optimistic, many people remain susceptible to the infection, so the impact of the pandemic could worsen in the second wave as a longer number of persons becomes infected. Six, pregnant women, obese individuals, people with asthma, cardiovascular disease, and diabetes, and the immunosuppressed are particularly vulnerable. Seven, the most urgent burden on health services is likely to be the increased number of patients with respiratory failure requiring intensive care, especially in developing nations. This demand could overwhelm intensive care units and disrupt the provision of hospital care for other diseases. And eighth and final, sanitary authorities have now licensed pandemic vaccines or vaccines against the pandemic virus in Australia, China, Hungary, and the US, soon to be followed by Japan and several European countries. The first doses are expected to be ready for use in the course of the month of October, but a critical challenge will be to secure access to the vaccine for all in need throughout the world. Now, the accumulation of knowledge about the H1N1 virus, its dissemination mechanisms, and the way to confront it has changed our perception of the influenza pandemic. During the coming fall and winter seasons, we'll be, we will be facing an expected and known event. So contrary to the first wave, where it was expected, but unknown, this is now expected and known. And this will change public expectations. The population is aware that health authorities can limit the dissemination of the infection through the use of the new vaccine and other public health measures, and that health services have at their disposal a reasonable arsenal of clinical devices to treat cases. So the population is now anxious and demanding. In a matter of months, we have moved from an environment of high public attention, low scientific certainty, and low social exig exigency to an environment of still high public attention, but now with relatively high scientific certainty and consequently very high social exigency. And that will lead to a situation where there will be little tolerance to mistakes or to missed opportunities to control the spread of this virus.